you may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. This is the case Hello. of Coe versus Coe. Thank you, Jerome. You're welcome. Good day, everyone. Today we have the case of Coe v. Coe, mother versus daughter. Uh, Ms. Coe, you say you are here today because your daughter is an out-of-control teenager and she needs help. Furthermore, you claim that uh, you have serious doubts uh, that your daughter's boyfriend, Mr. Boyce, is the father of your seven-month-old grandson. You say Mr. Boyce has been a good father to the baby, but that your daughter has numerous sexual partners, and so he needs to know the truth. Yes, ma'am. You have also petitioned the court to demand that your daughter attend parenting classes. Now, Ms. Coe, you dispute your mother's claims. You say you are positive that Mr. Boyce is your baby's father and say today's result of the paternity test will prove your mother wrong. You have asked the court to order your mother to stop meddling in your life once and for all. Uh, now, Ms. Coe, please tell the court why you're here today. I'm here because my daughter is out of control. Um, she has an issue with authority. She doesn't want to be told what to do, how to do, or why to do it. Give me specific instances. Okay. From fights at school, hitting a police officer, not once, but twice. She hitting a police a, officer. She punched a police officer twice. Twice. I get the phone call to go up to the school. I get there. I was thankful that I knew this police officer. He looks at me and he says, this is your daughter? He says, I could take her to jail right now. She could have a felony. Wow. The officer got in the way. In, in your petition to the court, you stated something about uh, damage to your home. Please yes. tell me that. She made a phone call saying that I and my girlfriend had jumped on her because she still did not want to follow house rules. All I asked her to do was not disrespect the house. Don't bring the drama to the house. I feel we like had... she, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. You brought drama to the house. That's not you the truth. You made a phone call saying, my mother and her girlfriend just jumped on me. Y'all, you come mess them I up. I said her girlfriend just jumped on me, and I did have but somebody come true. over there. She made that phone call. Them guys, they loaded up. They came to my house. They bust out every window. They busted out my car. They they destroyed my house. This was one week before I was um, that's actually. That's your car. That's my car. They broke out every window. That's my house. That's me standing on the porch trying to take a picture because now I'm upset and I'm like, you know what? I cannot believe my daughter is gonna allow this to happen. And, and I couldn't saying, believe your girlfriend jumped on me and I was pregnant. So, so the, you don't she got didn't the jump on you. They didn't jump. They broke out windows, car. They hit me with a brick. I got hit in the back of the head. What? And I you? also stopped them. I didn't think they were gonna do that to the house. I didn't say mess the house up. They took that into their own hands. Zaire, I'm so disturbed by what I'm hearing right now. This is excessive. Right. And right Over now, the top. She's really and dangerous. dangerous. I want to know how did you get here? Well, most children grow up with their mother, not their father. I grew up with my father because due to the fact she abandoned me when I was two I years old. I did not abandon you. I was told she dropped me off when I was two years old and never came back. No. And the reason I believed it is because I haven't seen her until I got in, in my teenage. You didn't have so much as a visitation? Oh, yes. I had visitation rights. She came over on weekends. I never and missed so a beat. And so did you ever have a positive relationship? No, not really. With my mom. She's always been resentful. I, I feel like I had always a good, been resentful. A good always been resentful. Sometimes I'm not here to, you know, you you move them them boys in in our house. If y'all had a problem, y'all would have put them out. If y'all had a problem, oh. y'all would have y'all would have enforced the rules so, and put them out. Did something. When I, I'm when a child, found like you said, I'm a child. There, if it was a problem, you should have put them out. I, if I'm when a child, we, I, I need to clarify something on this. Ms. Co. Mom, you're saying that Ms. Co. Daughter. Moved a gang into your home? Yes. It's at your house. You pay bills. If you wanted them out, you should have put them I out. I worked from 7 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning, seven days a week. How many people were there living down there? 
They weren't even living seven. down there. Seven people. Were you the only girl in this? It was three girls. It was me, another girl that lived with us, and another girl that lived with us. Everybody was living there. That was the hangout spot. That's where you go. You running away or you ain't got nowhere to stay, you gonna come there. Now, you're hanging out with these guys. Are you hanging out just as friends or are any of them more than friends? Are one you of them was the guy I was dating. The other one was just friends. They were dating my other two friends. So that brings us to why we're here. Because now you have a grandchild. But it's because... not just one guy. See, that's what she's saying. But it's not just one guy. There was somebody else in the picture. So, Mom, you're saying she was sleeping with multiple guys. I know that there was someone else. Now, how many more it was, I'm not for sure. But I do know that there was someone else. So, when I find out she's pregnant, I go to the guy. I go to Larry. I say to Larry, look, as Zaire's mother, I'm going to keep it real with you. I've got to be 100. I say you need to get a DNA test. But as the girl, me, I was being real, and I said, I'm not going to lie, but there is a possibility. He, this baby could be someone else. I didn't just say, you're the, you're the father, you're the father. I said it's a possibility, because I did do but something. Then, okay, I did see, mess up, and I did it. slip so and did. mess around with somebody else. So you have a boyfriend now. And that boyfriend may or may not be the father of your child. Yes, because I, w I did have a boyfriend, and I only messed with Larry when me and my boyfriend got into it. I went over to my best friend's house, and he was there. So now, what I believe, and you can tell me if I'm right, Mom, you're worried now about this cycle repeating itself. Exactly. And I know you still love and are concerned for your daughter. You've made that clear today. Really? Because even after she had done all of that to me, I move out to Arizona. She calls me two months later after I'm in Arizona. She says, Mom, I need you. I don't have anybody. I, you know, she's about to have my grandson. What do we do? And then she you still didn't want to do. What do you feel? Tell me. The it's okay. Only rule I have let her, for let her, her speak, Mom. What, what do you feel, sweetie? Tell me. You needed your mom. That's okay. We all need our moms. You you don't have to feel ashamed and about I that. I was there for you. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Are you worried for your baby? You don't want your baby to have to grow up and feel the things you felt? What are your hopes for your son? What do you want for him? I just want him to have up for his parents. And I don't want him to grow up like I did. And I don't want him to run the streets like I did. Because I don't want him just walking out to the store and anything can happen to him. Well, today we are going to determine who his father is. And we're also going to help encourage you. Your mom feels your pain. And I know you may feel like she doesn't love you, but if you look over at her right now, she's crying your same tears. Because just like you love your child, she loves you. I know you brought a witness today, Mr. Boyce, am I correct? Jerome, could you please escort Mr. Boyce into the sure. courtroom for us? I want to hear from him. He's your boyfriend, right? Yes, ma'am. And one of the potential fathers, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Boyce, please come and step to the podium. We know that um, today we're here to determine um, the paternity of this particular child, but we also know uh, that this child is very important to you. Yeah, he really is. Am I correct? Yes. Please tell the court about that. Uh, I feel like uh, from the beginning, I knew it was a possibility, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying, he, he, made, he made me grow more, you know what I'm saying, since he's been around. Because my mom, she, she passed away. And once I told her about it, you know what I'm saying, she just, oh, that's my grandbaby. She, she buying them everything. I'm like, So I'm your gonna... mom... She passed away in February. And so you're hoping today, what are your hopes? Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he's mine. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mr. Boyce, um, I have to say to you that this court 
has seen countless instances where a young man stands before me and you can tell they're wishing they aren't the child's father. And I first want to commend you before we get any results of the man that you are, the man that you are growing and becoming, the fact that you can give love to a child that does have uncertainty uh, as it relates to who their father is, but that you understand that love can come from all forms, fashions, and people, and that you can be the father figure that that child needs, regardless of that. I want to commend you for that. Thank you. Yeah. And he's making you a better man. Yeah, he made me, he made me feel like I got more to live for. After I lost my mom and my brother, I felt like I had nothing. That's my man. You looking at pictures of you as a child and him as a child. That's I can see son. in your eyes you love him. I'm really, really proud of you. I really am. I Thank want you to know that. <clears throat> and you know who else is? Who? Oh. Your mom. Yeah. She is. <laughs> and as, you know, as much of a stand-up man, you know, you're being in this decision, in this situation, I should say, you're being a really mature individual. I don't think we can discount the fact that as you walked into this courtroom, you may and you should naturally have some doubt. You have that right, where yeah, you I don't know. I have doubts, but... Why, why in particular, do because you have doubts? Because the time it happened, it's like, we, we wasn't together. She was in a relationship with another guy. I, don't, I always got a rubber in my back pocket, or a condom. I keep that. Even today? Yeah. Oh, OK. So, good, I mean, good. I'm glad to hear it. I can't really say if I used it or not because I was, I was under the influence, like tough. So you don't remember if the safe, the sex you had was safe sex? Yes. It wasn't. And the defendant. Know? I know okay. it wasn't because the first time, even when you wasn't under the influence, was you, you didn't drunk? use it. Was you drunk? What about the first time? Was you drunk? What about the first time? Was you drunk? No. Okay, the first time, that was something else. Did though. you use one? No. no. The second time? What? No. The third time? No. He didn't use one. I used condoms. Not with me? I, yes, I did. <laughs> right. okay. You ruining his reputation right here. <laughs> yes, I do, though. I probably ain't use them as much as I should, but that was because I was with you. Exactly. You didn't use them on Okay, them. but I used them after the one first time, time so... though. No, okay. So... Okay. He didn't use them. Miss Cole. But you have told this court that you think it could possibly be Mr. Boyce or maybe someone else. Okay. Let's go to the results, okay? Jerome, do you have the results? Here you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we ready? No. I'm ready. I'm ready. When it comes to baby Christian, Mr. Boyce, you are not the father. <sighs> yes, you are. You're here as father. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, you are. I'm still the father. You okay? I know this was not the way probably any of you wanted this to turn out. 
because I can see it in all of your faces. <laughs> can I just... Jerome, can, I just, can you can give I just me a touch tissue, him, Can I just... Can I just... I just... I'll just Hug him? Absolutely. Can I please? It's okay, baby. It's Absolutely. okay. We lost everybody, but... You are not alone. Can you hold me? I am so sorry, but it's okay. Mr. Boyce. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. I know the, the news is going to take a minute to sink in. That's OK. That's all right. And I know it's hard to accept. But if you can hear me now and potentially just think about this in weeks and years to come, that families are more than just biological connections. They are love connections. <laughs> Biology determines the father, but love determines who the daddy is. And... <laughs> the court is going to encourage you and provide you with resources towards parenting. I want you guys to learn about how to be great parents so you could do this for that little boy. Are we clear with that? I wish you all the best of luck. And you know what? At the end of the day, no matter what happens, look into that little face and do the right thing. Good day. Court is adjourned. Shall we bring in Christian? You guys want to see him? Here we go. Here we go. Hey. Still feels good, doesn't it? For him, you are his dad. And don't forget that. I believe you all can do this.